So another type of reaction called uh, powder preparation by evaporation of solvents and sometimes involving some chemical reaction, getting rid of solvent, evaporating solvent. Quite often we need the so-called fast removal of solvent from a uniform solution that create supersaturation and produce powder or precursor. And one method is called spray drying, removal of solvents alone. There's no other chemical reaction. Quite often it's going through some setup like this. I have a solution. Uh, feed flow, which is a suspension, quite often powder suspended in liquid, and uh, I have gas, and uh, the high velocity gas bring the liquid together with it, spray them into a big chamber, I have heat, to provide the heat, and the heat drives away what? The solvent, and the powder in this process, the liquid will break up, sorry, the gas will break up the liquid into small droplets, and in this way we get a reasonably uniform spherical particles or agglomerates, and this is how they collect the container, the collector, and let the cool the gas out container to collect the powder. This is called spray drying. Quite often you get around 10 micron agglomerate, which people use for many different applications. Very easy, the powder flows very nicely. Okay, It may need subsequent heat treatment for some of the system. Can use solution or suspension. Solution means you start from uniform. Suspension means a liquid but there's already solids in it, finely dispersed solids in it. Okay, The other one we call it uh, spray pyrolysis. pyrolysis. Spray is still, okay, you use gas to break them into small droplets, but pyrolysis, pyro means heat. Pyrolysis means there's a heat treatment step integrated together to, to carry out thermal decomposition quite often of the salts. This is a setup, okay. Still, quite often people do it in a tube furnace type of setup. On one side, I have either fine solution, uniform solution, or fine suspension, colloidal suspension. And then using atomizer, high velocity gas or something to break the liquid into small droplet and use high velocity gas to carry the liquid droplets through the furnace. And this furnace you heat up. And during the hot dome, you see, this is the nozzle, it sprays fine droplets, the mist. The mist goes into the chamber, the heating chamber, the inside of the tube, and going through solvent evaporation and some of the chemical reactions. Somolysis, we call it. Repeat with me, somolysis. Okay, or pyrolysis. Some people call it either somolysis or pyrolysis, which, okay, some of the chemical goes through decomposition reaction. And then at the other end, we would collect it, and that's what the powder looks like. Okay, I'm borrowing a schematic from the internet again. Quite often, it can be directly used for production of powders. Believe it or not, Dr. Our, our previous students used this method to get some carbide directly synthesized in the lab in one step. Quick, and of course it has advantage and also have disadvantage. Everything, but at least it's one way to do it. The other method people call it freeze drying. So instead of using heat, kind of now you are with the help of freezing, low temperature, removal of solvents at below freezing temperature by mixing cold liquid by mixing that with cold liquid and followed by vacuum sublimation. Vacuum sublimation going from solid directly into gas. That's how the solvents are removed. And then you are left with fine powder. Okay. And this is quite often the setup. You have the suspension, you have the air, and this is quite often liquid nitrogen. You spray them into here, they form frozen, liquid nitrogen, the water or organic solvent become frozen, and then the frozen granules, the granule, that word granules means 
so-called agglomerate of very fine powder bonded together into 10 micron quite often particulates. Okay, and then you put them into a vacuum chamber, vacuum, at not that low temperature, at slightly higher temperature, and then the liquid ice become in vacuum, become vapor directly without going through liquid phase. And that's how we have fine powder, well separated. These are quite often we used. In our lab, we have set up for this one, um, spray pyrolysis freeze drying we we do not have but that's quite often some people use it for um like food processing a lot of those other stuff okay so this is a what it's actually a unary single component phase diagram for water okay the vertical axis is pressure, horizontal axis is temperature, okay. Where is one atmosphere? The unit is Pascal, right? One atmosphere would be something like this. Make sense? At one atmosphere below zero degrees C, I'm in what state for water? Ice, right? Above zero, but below 100, I'm in what state? for water at one atmosphere. Be between zero degrees C and 100 degrees C, I'm in liquid phase water. And then above 100 degrees C, I'm in water vapor, right? That's just uh, at one pressure. Of course, as pressure changes, the phase boundary line would change naturally, okay? So there are different uh, drying mechanisms or solvent removing mechanisms. Let's just go through them one by one. One is for oven drying, conventional oven drying. You have a liquid together with suspension. You put them in a conventional oven in air. What at what pressure? One atmosphere, right? So, and then you heat it up. You heat it up, depending on temperature, but as you heat it up, more and more of the water would become what? Vapor phase, and then that's how you remove solvent. That's conventional oven drying. Okay, the other one is, okay, you may not heat it up, but let me just uh, use a vacuum pump. I do not heat it up. I just, what, decrease pressure. I decrease pressure, and as I decrease pressure, more of the water, liquid water would what? Evaporate into the gas phase because they try to maintain the equilibrium, and which it cannot, and then this is how you remove the liquid without changing temperature. Of course, sometimes we combine this heat up and vacuum together. Make sense? That's quite often how some vacuum oven works. You combine some vacuum and some heat, which means you go this way, not horizontal, not vertical. Make sense? The other way would be so-called freeze drying. Okay. At uh, this atmosphere, I quickly reduce what? Temp temperature. With liquid nitrogen at one atmosphere, everything now become frozen, ice. And then you transfer that into what? A vacuum chamber, go down here, vacuum chamber. And then you raise the temperature a little bit, not too high, still kind of below. Raise the temperature a little bit, the sublimation happens from solid directly into, from ice, solid directly into vapor phase. That's sublimation. That's the other method. Of course, there can also be supercritical drying. Supercritical drying, which is, okay, I'm increasing the temperature. At the same time, I'm increasing what? At the same time, I'm increasing the pressure. Okay, which is quite often you do that in a um, autoclave, in a pressure cooker, essentially. Raise the temperature, raise the pressure, and at a certain boundary, there's no clear boundary between gas and the liquid. And over there, the gas leaves the system. Supercritical drying. Okay. All these are possible ways to remove solvent from the uh, suspension and so that you get your powder, your ceramic powder. Okay.